Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. I'm Todd Colwell. Today's tutorial is to create a hide and seek game with Scratch Junior. It's for iPad and also for Android tablet. The subject is computing and it's for children ages 5 to 7. To do this lesson you need to make sure that you have Scratch Junior installed on your tablets, uh, iPad or Android tablets. And you also might want to have some coloured paper to act out doing the loops, sending different signals to each of the characters, which I'll talk about a bit later. The concepts in today's lesson are loops, so uh, making commands go around uh, in a circular fashion, uh, to broadcast messages, so, so to get little sprites to listen to messages and do things when those messages happen, and then send messages to other sprites, and to also debug algorithms. So the idea that telling a computer to do a series of commands is an algorithm, and also sometimes people make mistakes in doing those commands, so when you fix mistakes, it's called debugging. So the easy activity is so I'm going to take out the loops and that's just to make some sprites and then to show how to hide on touch. So this is the main screen for Scratch Junior and the first thing I'd like to show you is how to get rid of sprites. I just hold down the, the catch menu over here and then press the X. Now we can press the blue button over here to look at the menu of what other sprites are available. And to get another character as well, Going to choose. All right, and to drag them around, just simply hold down, and the penguin can go to the right over here. And to get the background, press this button at the middle here. So, and to get a whole scene. All right, so the idea in this simple program is to show the children two different ways to start things. You can start when you press the green flag over here. And also you can start when you touch things on the screen, when you touch the sprites. So I'm going to select the polar bear and he is going to move some steps over towards the penguin and it will be up to the user to get the penguin out of the way by touching him so he hides. So um, we go to the yellow menu over here. So this is all the different ways to start things. Just start on green flag and simply just drag it down here. Start on green flag and the movement menu is here then we want to have a look at the grid first. I'll show you the grid so you can see how big the steps are. You see that there are 20 squares uh, from left to right and 15 squares going to up. All right, so I think if we move about 10 squares, that should be able to reach the penguin. So I'm going to touch the grid again to get it off. And this is just to move to the right. And we don't want to move to the right one. You might see children, if they want to drag, uh, if you want to go right 10 steps, they might be going one and one and one. So you need to show them that you can actually change this number down here. So to make this 10, otherwise it would take them a long time to drag 10 blocks down here. So when you press the green flag, go 10 steps. So let's press the green flag to have a look. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to drag the polar bear back. And now the penguin, meanwhile, he has to get out of the way. So when uh, we start the program, that will be up to the user. So this means when on touch. So start on tap penguin as the program it comes up with some helpful commands here. The penguin can, now this is the different menu here about hiding and showing things, but this one's for hide. All right, so we'll just connect that, drag that down and connect it together. And then this time, when we can get the penguin out of the way at that time. By the way, this one up here is full screen, so we can show it again. And the green flag and the penguin, when I touch the penguin there, you can see the touch mark on the tablet, he hides. So that's the easy activity. Activity, it's time to have a look at a loop. And if you look at this diagram, we have two sprites. And one of the sprites is a blue wizard. Now the blue wizard listens to the keyword blue, and then he shows on the screen and then says the message orange and then hides. Meanwhile, the orange horse, it knows to show on the screen when it hears the message orange. So it gets that message and shows on the screen and then says the message blue and then hides. So you can see this is the start of a loop. So once the horse has said the message blue, the wizard then knows he's been hiding, remember? And then the wizard shows to run the screen and then says the message orange and so on. So it continues. So if you were going to act this out as a class before you get to the programming side of things, you would have half the class as wizards and they would probably have a blue card 
and the other half of the class as the horse with an orange card. And so you'd get one of the two to sit down. So let's say you get the horses, the orange horses to sit down and that can be like hiding in this in Scratch Junior and the other people can be standing the, the wizards and they can be showing on the screen okay so the wizards have to stand up and then they would say orange and then sit down meanwhile you would have told the orange horses when they hear the word orange stand up and say blue and then sit down and then you can see the loop continues so it would be a good introduction to this programming activity so let's have a look at how to do all of that the loops and sending messages to each sprite um, it's called Broadcasting Messages on Scratch Junior. All right, first of all, let's get the characters. And the wizard is just there at the top. And the horse is a little bit down below. So there. Now the new character. And then for the horse. Okay, so the wizard. Start on tap and say the message orange. I'll just drag these out of the way. So first for the wizard, make sure you're touching the right sprite. Now for the yellow menu, start on tap. Now the wizard has to say a message orange. Send a message orange and then hide afterwards. So go to the purple menu and go to this one, hide. We can drag it down. All right, so then the horse uh, is listening to that orange message. So we go down to the yellow menu for the starting and this one, start on message orange and then it's going to show. So we go to the menu over here and go to show. We can drag that down. All right, so then when we tap the horse, we want something else. It needs to send a message back to the wizard to tell it to show. Oops, I don't want to delete the wizard. And so when you tap the horse, it sends a message of blue back to the wizard. And then we want the horse to hide again so, so that both of the sprites are not showing at the same time. So we go to the purple menu and then we can go to hide. And one more thing to complete the loop, the wizard needs to be listening to that blue message. So we're going to put the, uh, the tap message over here and then he needs a signal to start. So we go to this one. Start on orange message instead of orange, we're going to drag it down and then press blue blue message then we go to then we go to the purple menu and we go to show all right so it seems pretty complicated and a lot of debugging in this probably so let's press the green flag and see how we went so at the start they're both showing then we, when we start to touch them then they'll start to hide so the horse has got that uh, message to start on the orange and show and then when we've tapped the horse he sent the blue message to the wizard meanwhile the wizard has sent the orange message and he's listened the horse has listened to the orange message and so on and of course while we've got the loop the final thing to do is to add a background we go up to here and we can have a nice play in the leaves over here in the autumn day Okay, so some of the challenge activities are to have more than two sprites in a loop. I won't go through that because I've, I've talked enough about the loop. Uh, but also to add a recorder sounds to the sequence. So that's something that might be quite fun. And to do that, we go to the green menu, the sound menu. And we've got this pop noise, the default one in the program. Or if we drag a block down to here, we suddenly get this message to record. So we can say a message like, hey -ya! And then once we do that, we can make a block. So uh, it's recorded the sound. So we can say once the wizard, if we tap the wizard, it can say hey -ya, and then send the message to the horse and so on. You can do another one for the horse and I said, oh, nay, I'm not going to do a nay, but uh, you should get the idea for that. Okay, check out the Scratch Junior website for a uh, look at other resources. And there's also some great YouTube videos out there for Scratch Junior activities. Thank you. To request a tutorial or to download a copy of the slides used in this tutorial, visit letsknowncomputing.com 
While you're there, please subscribe to the Let's Learn Computing YouTube channel so you don't miss a tutorial. I'm Todd Colwell. Thanks for listening and see you next time.